Hello. Today I'm going to walk you through adding a node to a FusionOS cluster. So what we have here is a default FusionOS install. I have set it up in AWS, but these principles will work anywhere you want to set up FusionAuth. And I've created a two node cluster. If you go to System About, you'll see that you can see the two nodes that I mentioned. Now in front of these two nodes is a Nginx load balancer, and behind them is a database, a managed database. I'm using RDS. Again, you can run the database on EC2 or any other database provider. The important thing is that it's a separate database from each of these FusionAuth nodes. You can see that the nodes are listed. We have information about the nodes, like their ID, their IP address, their startup time. And then there's a this node section. And that tells you which node of all the nodes in the cluster is servicing the request. So if I hit refresh a couple of times, you can see that the check mark bounces between node one and node two. That's how we know that both nodes are active, both nodes are responding to requests. So there are two main reasons you might want to add nodes to a FusionAuth cluster. The first is to improve how many logins and registrations and other user auth workflows your FusionAuth instance can handle. Especially for logins, FusionAuth tends to be CPU bound because the hashing mechanism is designed to be CPU intensive because of the way that password hashing works, you can handle more logins by horizontally scaling. And FusionAuth nodes are almost entirely stateless. So it's a very good candidate for horizontally scaling. The second main reason you might want to have multiple nodes in a cluster is for redundancy purposes. Typically, you want people to be able to log into your application. The auth system being down is a bad thing. By spreading your nodes across different availability zones, if you're in AWS or another cloud provider or different data centers, if you're in the on-prem environment, you can lower the risk of an availability zone failing and your users being unable to access FusionAuth, therefore being unable to log in, therefore being unable to access your application. So performance and reliability or redundancy are two main reasons you might be interested in having multiple nodes as part of your FusionAuth instance. So I will be adding a node to this cluster in this demo. So you can see I have four EC2 instances running right now. We have four Nginx, which is our load balancer, FusionAuth 1 and 2, which are the current nodes in our system, and then the new one that I just spun up. So bringing a new node online into a FusionAuth cluster is pretty simple. The first thing you need to do is get FusionAuth installed on that node. So first thing you need to do is install FusionAuth. So I'm going to SSH to the new server. I'm going to install FusionAuth via the RPM package. But you could use any of the installation methods that FusionAuth supports.
if you wanted to, you could download and install Elasticsearch. Typically, when you are running a cluster of Fusion Auth, you're going to have Elasticsearch off of Fusion Auth. Typically, you're not going to want to install it. It's very important that the configuration file between all the different nodes of a given Fusion Auth cluster is identical. Otherwise, you have undetermined behavior. So what I did is I took the FusionAuth.properties file from one of the other nodes that I showed you and copied it down to my local machine. On line 10 through 12, the database connection information, that's pretty much the only thing I customized in this properties file. So now we have Fusion Auth bot properties file, but of course we need to put it where it goes. So we've moved it, and now I'm going to restart Fusion Auth to make sure that it picks up those changes. So what have you done so far? We've installed Fusion Auth on the new server and we have set up so that it's configured in the same way as the other nodes. Let's check and see what is happening in the Fusion Auth admin UI. If I reload this page, we can see that there is a new node that is added. So it's got a different address. It's 10.0.0.11. It has a start time much more recent than the other start times. Right, this is 3.59. This is 8.40. So the new node has successfully started up and registered itself with all the other nodes. Now, as you recall, the check mark next to this node indicates that that server is the server that responded to this request. So let's see if we can ever get it to show up at node two. Not there, so it must be at node three. Yep, all right, back at node one. Must be at node three again. Node one, node three. What's happening here? Oh wait, we didn't actually modify our load balancer to send traffic to this node running at 10.0.0.11. So the Fusion Auth instances know about this new node, but the load balancer does not. Let's fix that. This is a pretty vanilla Nginx instance. About the only things I did were I had this upstream section, which basically tells Nginx what servers it can proxy to. So we're gonna modify that. And you can see that this is all happening in a private network. So I can set up the network configuration on FusionAuth so that it is never even accessible to the outside world. 
all HTTP traffic has to pass through Nginx. The other part of the configuration is configuring Nginx to actually send the requests on. That's happening down around line 62 to 67. Line 66 is where we actually say, hey, here's the place where you're going to actually proxy it. The other ones are uh, request headers that need to get passed on to Fusion Auth so that it can interact correctly. So I don't have to change the proxy settings at all. I just have to change the upstream to add the new node. Of course, I have to restart Nginx so that it picks up the changes. So now we have all the Fusion Auth nodes know about each other and the load balancer does as well. Let's see if we can have node two actually serve some requests. And there you are, node two is now part of our cluster. So you can see how easy it was to add a new node to a Fusion Auth cluster. Basically, we needed to stand up a server. We needed to install Fusion Auth on it. We needed to configure it correctly to talk to the backend database. And then we needed to update our load balancer to make sure that the load balancer directed traffic to the new node of the cluster. Typically, you're going to want that algorithm to be round robin and you're gonna want all the Fusion Auth nodes to be as similar as possible. Thank you for your time.